अभी कितना डेलीगेट्स है नहीं अभी नहीं पता चलेगा एंड में पता चलेगा ओके एंड में गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन वी वेलकम यू ऑल टू ऑर्थो टीवी ऑनलाइन वेबिनार सीरीज टूडे वी हैव अ सीनियर आर्थोप्लास्टी सर्जन इज फ्रॉम फरीदाबाद एन सी आर इज नेम इज डॉक्टर सुजॉय भट्टाचार्य जी ही इज वेल वेरी वेल ट्रेन इंटरनेशनली फ्रॉम यू एस एंड यू के इज डायरेक्टर एंड हेड ऑफ डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ सेंटर फॉर एक्सलेंट जॉइंट रिप्लेसमेंट सेंटर सर्वोदय हॉस्पिटल ही इज गोइंग टू टॉक टू अस ऑन टिप्स एंड ट्रिक्स इन सी आर नी Uh, which will be a case based discussion this webinar is brought to us by biorad medicis the makers of genius crn so over to dr sujoy bhattacharya ji thank you very much uh, it is my gratitude and i want to thanks the biorad and ortho tv also to give me a platform to speak on this uh, crn is which is very close to my heart uh because cerni i think is a, uh, there is a in all conferences there is a, uh, a fight for the cerni or ps because uh, i think the increase amount of the serious surgeons are there and i hope that uh, there is a definite reasons why there has to be increase in the ser surgeons and it is my uh, moral duty and i feel that uh, there is a huge scopes for the cerni is for doing a tk in india because there are different regions are there most common regions i think one of them is the we have a very small knees indian females the short stature very small knees and if you take the ps box cut after the box cut the hardly few amount of bone left in the both the condyles and if such patients need the revision then there is a big issues i think in such cases the considering the all other facts of this fight the ps and cer surgeons this is a very small i think and the first and uh, foremost reasons why i have been shifted 100% to the crnis for the last more than 5 years and i am here to tell you that there is a basically there is no fight i am not going to say the crni why better than the psnis because here in india basically all of us even me also i started my uh, practice orthoplasty with the psnis but gradually i start converting myself in cr and for the last 5 years i am there i gradually i converted all uh, the cr knees completely for the last years i haven't converted a single knee to a ps knees for the last year 100% i'm doing the cr so why i am here i am here to to present some things to because previously uh, there were some barriers people say when i first saw cr knees one of the surgeons in india he told there is a limitation of being a cr knees in all cases you cannot do cr because uh, you can do only the some selected cases but i have been uh, visited different parts of the world and i have seen it it is possible and i started practicing and i'll show you couple of very complex primary cases where uh, you feel that it is impossible to come across with the cr but i have done cr knees and that is my commitment and that is the my issues i'm here with you to show you Few difficult, complex primary cases where I operated with this primary CR knees in the flat polys. If you see the why there is a advantage of the preserving the uh, PCL, it is a give the normal rollback, pre preserve the proprioception. But there is a con fights. I don't want to. Yeah, these are the accepted. Uh, you can say these are uh, accepted uh, advantage of keeping or saving the PCLs, but. some people say that this proprioception it has got no use and there hardly any proprioception keeping the pcl but it is there roll back up there is a out of need of the cutting the bone box that is the most important and foremost reason why i converted me to a cr surgeon because in the indian knees are very small knees bone cut sometimes is difficult making the recovery fast with full flexions because uh, cr knee i think uh, because we first uh for most important facts is that we uh, balance the knees in flexion first then you go for the extensions and in all my uh, cr knees there is hardly any issues of flexion and extension they have the same equal amount of 
or collections what we expect uh, expect in dark patients if you're using the some other type of implants reduces the risk of complication of course while using the sear is because we will be very cautious to cut the tibia cut because you have to save the pcl so your uh, saw should go the is a divergent way it is not a convergent way if it is a divergent then you are away from the mid part it means there is a less chance of vascular complication if at all it is there in the ps knees the less operative trauma of course you are preserving a most important structures so definitely there will be less amount of operative trauma inherent stability i am absolutely in favor of this uh, points inherent stability because i feel that the pcl is the most important uh, you know factors which gives the stable balance in the both the compartments of the knees and the less load between the bones and cement that gives the increased life of the implants and is a good for the revision surgeries i'll show you cases where you can come across revision of the sear knees you can revise with the uh, implant where we need the minimum amount of poly we need not to go for the sleeve or cone some things are all the revision uh, uh, things it doesn't require because most important part of the bone is the middle part of the bone for the condyles it is saved so it means that you will be using less amount of revision implant in that case you will be reduce the cost of surgeries and you reduce the cost of because you are not using the huge poly or not using the cone or sleeve you are more biological so it gives a better results and even if the without cement the i think the most common i the in india the i think one of two cases the companies are marketing not much but i think there is a scope because right now you are getting the younger patients for coming for this tka in such cases we can of course we can try with this uh, non cemented non cemented humeral part not in the tibia of course tibia is difficult in india but non cemented humeral part and that is good if you are using the sear implant i am just simplify the technique of this sear knees i feel that it is this is my experience i'm what i'm sharing for the last about it more than a decade and uh, this is my experience sharing the crnis the always complete the femur cut first uh, i think you know, sometimes it is uh, when, the, when there is a flexion deformity is more than 20 25 degrees it is in dilemma whether i have to cut more or less you cut less if you want to cut more distal femur cut you can cut in the lateral one also we cut starts with this if the flexion deformity is more you can cut 2 mm more don't go for beyond that if you need you can come again to the femur part you can cut Uh, femur you just start with the you complete all femur cut first that will be very easy for doing the sear knees because uh, we always uh, balance the sear knees in flexion first there is a uh, balance the knee in the flexion then we uh, the balance the knees in extensions but in the ps knees we always balance the knees in extension first tibia cut is either with a natural cut or you give the 5 to 7 degree slope because in the ps knees is always the 0 degree slope or less than 5 degree but in the sear knees the natural slope is always maybe 5 mm 5 to 7 degree but if there is a recurvatum is there in that case you have to reduce i'll show you cases where the recurvatum i reduce the slope and sometimes the slope is 0 degree in the sear knee also decompress the pcl if you are 20 minutes surgeon then it is very difficult to come across the sear knee because sometimes sear knee uh, it takes more time because you have to be very cautious and meticulous to decompress the pcl because uh, many the times there are there osteoids are there just behind the pcl uh, which is difficult to balance the knees so you have to decompress the pcl before putting the child implant inside because if you are not decompressing the a uh, pcl you try to decompress they try to put the trial implant that it can be avals it can come out pcl in that case you have to convert to this to ps knees so decompression of the pcl is the most important thing so it takes some time it's like that is it's some the precision it takes time you cannot do it in a uh, 20 minutes uh, surgery the whole tk in sometimes it takes 10 minutes to more than that to decompress the pcl because you cannot sacrifice the pcl because you have to using the flat poly you have to preserve in amount and the total amount of the pcl then only you can come across with the sear knees with the flat polys then pcl balancing is one of the most important factors for doing the sear knees and uh, if there is a first thing if the space flexion space is tight you can increase the slope in even if the increase the slope you cannot get into this trial then you can little bit of additional posterior condylar cut or maybe 
release of the anterolateral band of the facial is hardly required. But in case, that case, if you are releasing the anterolateral band of facial, in that case, better to go for this ultra congruent poly or, or UC poly or whatsoever poly is there, but the normal flat poly, it is sometimes difficult because there may be sliding from the anterior side because all you release the PCL. Uh, this anatomy and balancing of the cruciate ligament, the four bar cruciate linkage system. So the anterior lateral portion is tight in flexions. That's why the, the flexion is tight. In some time, take a little bit of release the anterior lateral part of this PCL. And posterior medial part, the portion is a tight in extension. This part, you cannot touch. If you are releasing the posterior medial part of the PCL, then definitely you have to sacrifice the, the PCL. In that case, you will compromise the surgery and you have to go into the PS surgeries. So right now there is a, I'm thinking when there is a, uh, now right now I'll show you the cases now, there are a few of the cases, uh, because there is a, uh, uh, if you can say many of the things why I was here and I, I tell you that this is there, the PSS and says, no, no, this is not raw, this is not acceptable. Uh, if I say, so there is a controversy is there. Don't want to controversy, I'll show you a couple of cases, difficult cases where we feel that CRNA is difficult with the flat polys. In me, the gross varus deformity, the flex pressure deformity is gross valgus, valgus varus, morbid obese patient, stiff knee, osteosynthesis with the TKR, TKR with implant in situ, TKR with the pre uh, fractures and revision. These are the conditions where we can use the CRNAs with flat poly. Now, first case, I'll show you the virus with the patient deformities. This is a 45 years male, and uh, it's a morbid obese patient with the virus with patient deformities. Uh, right knee is the virus, 35 degree virus with fifth patient deformities, 20 degree. And the left is the virus, 30 degree, with patient deformities, 20. And oh, yeah, hip bones, both the sides with the normal limit, and the spine also with normal limit. This is the preoperative, I think, posture way you, you work. You hardly work because of this Muras virus deformities. This is a scanogram. You can see the huge osteophytes here in the posterior part. We start operating the patients. Now, in the difficult cases, there is some controversy whether you're doing the unilateral or bilateral. Does navigation have any age inventory? I think even today also in such difficult cases, I always keep a PSO semi-constant type of implant in, uh, in, my, in my kitty because you do not know any time you can come across the complication. It's better to keep the inventory in, with you in all type of implants. The bone defect, definitely there are the medial bone defect is there. Then you have to be ready with this wages or you can, whatsoever you're comfortable, you can cover with the autologous bone top or you can lateralize the TBL component, but I'm not absolutely in favor of lateralize the bone component because in that case, you are compromising the uh, axis of the stevia. In that case, the life of the implant will be less. In that case, you are not supposed to do it. Basically, better to make the uh, def defects either with the wage or the autologous bone drop. Uh, since I have a navigation, so I always prefer to do with the navigation. So uh, I use the navigation for doing the surgeries in all type of surgeries. And here, because of, because of the lot of defects is there, I cannot come. This is a lateral 13 mm and 5 mm. I want to get the less amount of cut. In that case, what I did, uh, I uh, approximalized this uh, femur cut because this is a navigation cut. Because this is the maximum, I cannot reduce more than that. Because 13 mm lateral cut, I want to make it at least 11 mm. So I 2 mm proximal shape to the cut, less this is femur cut. Uh, this is the way I make the uh, defect on the, because I take all the cut of the femur, then I made the tibia. Then I fulfill the tibia defects with the bone, fix the screws. Now, this is the final implant positioning after the, uh, this is the X-rays, post-op X-rays. We have done the CR implant in the both sides with this 9 mm flat poly. This is absolutely, I think the, the balancing is absolutely perfect. And this is the screw I made the uh, tibia, middle side of the tibia and both the sides with the screws and autologous bone graft. The third post-op day, the complete correction of deformity, this is the post of scanogram we have taken. This is full extensions. And the flexion is more than 110 degree. Same day I make the patient walking in the same day. Uh, one or two days we put the brace. And from third day onward, one patient muscles was uh, quite, 40 steps was good enough. Then we allowed the patient to walk without the brace. Uh, this is the valgus knee. 
Valgas bilateral approach, either will be the KBish approach or the conventional uh, middle parameter approach, what's your approach is comfortable with you guys. Because I always feel that the lateral Valgas is only best approach, the lateral approach to the KBish approach, always with that is very good. It is very easy and because when you open the lateral approach, the defect is just in front of you. It is very difficult to uh, manage the defect in the lateral defects. You can put the bone graft or screws or wedge, whatever you want. It is easier. But only issue is that we are not much that much of oriented because mostly you are doing the, uh, the various knees. We are not used to opening the valgus knees. That's why you, if you are not used to, then we have a some fear whether you can able to do it or not. I'm telling you it is a very easy approach and it is very easy to correct. If the valgus knees, you always should try the lateral approach. The fuel rotations, you can put the either navigations or if it's a standard manual, then you can the five degree. Uh, same way I cut the distal cut, distal femur cut first. And tibial defect is mostly contained defects because this is a pre op. This is my standard practice of anesthesia. I feel that whatever correctable uh, defect is there, I'm, in that case, we can have the idea of the ligaments laxity. And see uh, that the defect is contained defects. Mostly the uh, all cases, it is a diff contained defect. But these contained defects, if it is uh, more than two millimeter, if it's less than two mm, then you can come with this only the cement. If it is two to ten, then you can come with the screws. Uh, if it is more than ten, then you have to put a graft. Uh, it looks like it's uh, around two to around uh, two to four. Then you can easily come across with the uh, the cement. In that case, we uh, there is no need of putting a uh, Screws also, then we are operated with this uh, sear knees and with a flat poly, 9 mm flat poly. This is the immediate post stop. And see the degree of flexions. Pressure is absolutely comfortable. Third post of the pressure is working without comfort. In all cases, I go to use the tunic. That's why pressure with a post stop rehabilitation is very easy if you're not using the tunic. This is the valgus with various deformities. This is a uh, difficult things. Now the difficult things comes. Is a uh, left side is a valgus, right side is a varus knee. The patient is osteoporotic. This patient was uh, operated during the COVID time because the patient was uh, about to operate in the month of February or March, something like that. But not operated. But patient was scared because of the COVID. But uh, she was on bed and she was hardly working. But she thought that after a couple of one or two months, things will be okay. But if it is not, then he came. On the 2nd of 3rd June, 3rd third, third June, she was with me. 3rd June 2020, she was with me. It is a very difficult one because this is the posture and this is the defect. On the left side, this is a contained defect with the valgus knee, and the right side is the varus. Uh, this is a scanogram. This is a CT scanogram. This is the X ray scanogram. This is the defect. Right side is the, uh, this is the right knee. Right knee, the varus knee with the FFD 3% deformity. Left knee, the valgus with recurvatum. Right knee, the varus 25 degree, varus with 3% deformity 20 degree. Left knee, the valgus 30 degree, recurvatum 20 degree. Now, this is a difficult case, but I'm operating such case with the CR knee. Always you have to keep uh, everything uh, with you because. You are not sure anytime you can come across the complication. I'm talking of the left knee here because the right knee was a standard knee is what we, I'll show you in earlier cases. Same way I approach on the medial parapetal approach and I put screws, I made the defects and I come across with this uh, uh, sear knees. This is a left knee. I approach with the Kebish approach, lateral approach. You see, the, when you open the approach, this is the defect is just in front of you. And uh, this is the defects. And this is the contained defects. And we, uh, because another problem is that this patient was having the recurvatum. That's why we put the tibial slope zero degree. And uh, we take the big minimum cut. You see the lateral condyles. Lateral condyles, the still cartilage is there. It means we haven't cut anything in the lateral sides. We take the minimum cut. Only the very, uh, I take this cut with the navigations. And this is a very minimum cut in the uh, middle sides. And there is absolutely there's no cut in the lateral sides. And the, in the lateral side, there is a absolutely no cut because the defect is, uh, I just curated and I put a screws. Uh, this is a uh, post-op x-rays. This is the right side. We put a defect, uh, the middle defect is 
uh, maintained with the bone and screws and the lateral defects in the right side left side we put a screws and uh, bone cement this is how we done with the sear poly sear knees with 9 mm flat poly perfectly balanced soft tissues uh, basically you know the bcl tcl helps to stabilize see there is absolutely there is no gap and this is absolutely properly balanced knees Uh, this is my standard practice. Uh, in the day one, I made the patient stand. In the couple of days, I put a screen in both sides to see patient was defect was too much. The second post up day, patient was comfortable. Patient was working with support in the hospital. This is 40 days. A good amount of body soft strength. She can hold with one kg uh, top. This is a wet top. In the right side. the left side also because she was having more problem with the left side because left side was a galgal knee with recurvatum with a multiple uh, deformities with the bone loss with the muscle wasting was there but she was very properly she had done a lot a good job and after 40 days see the patient started walking without support and i think this is the biggest gift i got in uh, covid time because i operated this patient in covid period by the month of june by the peak of the covid i was denied to operate but patient was forcing me because she was she was crying she was telling they had to make a difference if die of this covid uh, because i want to leave i cannot leave my life on the bed please operate me i'll give you all the uh, written consent whatsoever you need i'll give you the written so i i forcing you to operate and i think this is the biggest gift i got in uh, covid time and see after 40 days our patient is absolutely comfortable i am in touch with the patient today only i this got this video i asked the patient to send the video see uh, her smiling face she is very happy this is absolutely two months 8th of june i operated and right now today is uh, around exactly two months and and she is smiling face she is absolutely comfortable and there is no lurch and there is a very comfortable movements and absolutely without brace and patient is walking so Yes, this is a, i think very difficult case to operate this is another case same problem this is the defects on the right side this is the valgus and the left side is a varus deformity 71 years female mirror image deformity osteoporosis contained defects and patella baha in both sides is something similar type of patients global laxity scanogram these are the difficult case and you have to keep ready because right side you say there is a very much contained defect and such cases operating you have to keep everything with you you have to keep the all the semi constant implant and all types of uh, wages and uh, available things uh, even you can put uh, keep the things your uh, because any time you can come across open the whole uh, knees and that case you have to put a constant implant also so you have to take some time and it takes a uh, uh, every cut is very important no release basically you have to take care of the in type of release and patient and whether we should operate such case or not that is also another issues you have to uh, explain to the patient attendant because such patients need more time for the post op rehabilitation because when patient once you operate the patient then suddenly patient start comparing he has a next door patient and he or she says my next door patient is very comfortable in the one month of time and i am not doing well after a, a two or three months four months also because such patients needs more time because they bred in for more than a year and uh, this the defect is a little bit a correctable gross quadriceps wasting poor muscle mass in that case you have to see if you want to see whether there is a quadriceps tendon is there there is a hardly a little bit of flickering uh this is a protocol is there this is my standard protocol we get the spine x rays and mri hip x rays scanogram quadriceps muscle strain dexa scan implant inventory we keep everything with me before st uh, start the op surgeries same thing right knee we start with the kebish approach minimum bone cut atrophic lateral condyles no release absolutely this this type of knee doesn't need to release and move to your fights and we are using the right side 5 degree offset to lateralize to medialize the uh, uh, implant tibial implant and uh, 5 degree offset to used and we rebuild with the bone tan screws the right side and the left side also we using the uh uh you build the middle defects with the bone and screws and this we absolutely come across with the implant with 9 mm flat poly because there's a little bit of uh, opening on the 
middle side of the right these bots in such cases because the government are so relaxed because we because we, uh, we give the patients in uh, you know the uh, splint uh, knee mobilizer at least for a month so 30 to 45 days eventually the tissues and ligaments get contracted and this is goes off because there's a pcl is there any such a bad case also pcl was very healthy the pcl was intact in that case it this this release this space is gradually it reduces and sometimes after after month after three four months six months to get the x-ray done you see the knee is properly balanced this is 20 days post-op follow-up because uh, there is absolutely no strain so we have taken the bar to Same make the patient point. stand this is point. the 50 days follow-up at home patients start working with this walker this is the 50 days is the condition stain she can hold she can hold the limb see there's a good quality of strengthening in the right side. Because right side was more defect, it was a valgus knee, there's a defect in the bone defect, valgus knee. So there, there's a least amount of quality of strength was here. But she uh, worked well, she did a good uh, rehab exercises with weight, and it comes with this uh, good amount of strength in the right side. She can holding it for the long time. Mm, the left. She is able to hold it. It means a good body substrate. This is a nine month follow up. She was having problem in the uh, spine also. She is from a village. She is now declined to come for the checkup. She is happy because she is pain free. She can walk with the stick. Uh, she is not eager to come and go for uh, come for this. Uh, I called her multiple times because I want to get the X-ray. I want to see what she refused. She is because she, I'm very happy working with the stick and I'm happy, no problem. Proper planning, skill and patients can get into the primary implant in difficult cases also. PCL remains intact and healthy, even in the such bad cases where there's a bone defect, bone loss, so much of was defied, still the PCL is intact and PCL is healthy. And PCL helps in the ligament balancing. This is the morbid obese. This is another uh, topic. Most of the uh, surgeons feel that the morbid obese patient is, is very difficult and you are not supposed to perform the sureness. But my experience, my uh, opinion is that the obese patient is the best patient for doing the sureness. Because see, when the, I've seen, this is my experience, uh, when the obese patient, uh, the, the knees are generally very, very small knees. Uh, they are either the, the little A, B, C, something like that. So what's the company who pick up the smaller amount of knees and their their size of the knees is very big because of the fat because of the associated surrounding fats it looks at the huge knees but they open and so much of osteophytes there if you remove the osteophyte then you come into the very small knee the huge patient small knee and if you really want to do something with this ps then hardly there is the issue with the saving the condyles in some time it is difficult so these are the cases i think fit for this sear knees but only issue is that you have to be Cautious, you have to see because many of the patients there is a recurve time in that case you have to reduce the tibia slope. You have to think twice for the release. You should never release the tibia first. You start with the tumor first. You don't release the tibia because if you need, then only go for the tibia release. Otherwise, not. You don't in such patients basically they don't need any release. Only the minimum cut bone cut you can accommodate the uh, sear implant. This patient is 121 kg weight, 68 years female. Uh, bedded in for them more than a year. Multiple comorbidities, osteoporosis there. Another issue with the operating such cases, whether you should operate both knees together or single knee, because sometimes in general, these patients are, takes a little bit of more time, but if you're experienced, then you can reduce the time also. The navigation gives best result. I think this is my experience in all these patients. Definitely I'll choose to operate with the navigations. This is a soft tissue already discussed. Soft tissues are relaxed, cut lace in the femur. Don't media release before cuts. Tibia, less slope, we, there's a, mostly these patients have a recurvatum, the less slope and short tibia stain. And distal femur cut also have to reduce because if there's a recurvatum, you have to reduce that distal femur cut at least two to four mm. This patient is done under navigations we, because in such cases, when the weight is more than 100, then we put a tibia stain just to, uh, with the soft bone, we are uh, uh, counter the, uh, because there's a chance of uh, sinking of the tibia and this for the weight bearing surface of the tibia, we put a stain, cemented stain. This is a immediate post-op patients. This is after around two months time, our patients started working without, without support.
uh, this is a uh, another patient. This is my uh, practice before a uh, day before surgery. So I want to say what is the videos in all my patients. Uh, this patient is 62 years female, 104 kg weight. This is a 55 years patient, 94 kg weight. This is the obese patient. She has been working with this worker for more than a year of time. This is a pre-op X-rays. This is a post-op X-rays. I put a stain done with the cyanides. This is a pre-op. This post-op done with the nanomem poly and the with stain. The day of surgery, all my patients the standard practice. I make them stand. This is the day of surgery. Both the patient I made them stand. Operate the same day. The third post-op day. Patient is walking without support. Are there no brace used? So even in the, I think these are uh, overweight patients. Uh, I think the, the my tips is there, not to use the tunica, uh, less tumor cut, reduce the tibial slope, use the navigation if it is possible, and uh, you don't ever the patella because if you want to ever the patella, it takes more cut. You can subluxate the patella. You can get into the surgery is no problem. And if you follow the tips, I think these patients, the obese patients, the CRN is possible and the result is amazing result. They are the must, they have the must praise, smart gratitude patient than they are the uh, lean thin patients. I think they are much more complaining than the lean thin patient, but with the fatty patient, they have a less complaint. They are, they are, they are very happy patients, you can say. They're very happy patients compared to the thin patients. The stiff knee, this uh, patient is having stiff knee. The hardly any movement. See, this is the panacea. Patient is holding. Absolutely stiff. This is absolutely stiff. Now the tips are the patella release from the femur. Most issue is the patella because when you open the knees with the parapatellar approach. Now the release from the femur is an issue because mostly the patella is adhered to this uh, femoral condyles. When you have to care for that, release the uh, patella and you have to release the cordyceps tendon. Q release, cordyceps release is very important. Uh, you can take a flat osteotome and you can release the cordyceps subperiosteally. It will give you a little bit. Then remove all osteophytes, I think, then subluxate the patella and prepare. Because in such case, only if you can subluxate the patella, that will solve the problem. Because sometimes subluxate the patella is difficult. You have to care for this, uh, the what is the tendon? You have to release the patella tendon also. And you have to release the patella also. Because you are not supposed to get any complication with the patella. And all cards are as recommended. We start with the femur first. When the card femur and everything is very easy. But in case it has been seen that if you release the cordyceps properly, only the tips is there. Subperiosteal release of the cordyceps with the straight osteotome, it gives you solve the purpose. Three, uh, four, five, six, see, this is seven, the immediate eight, post nine, ten. Pay See, Nichi around ninety degree flexion is already Matna there. Bodo? And ha. patients Bapisa can tao? climb stairs. Even after surgery. Patients are climbing stairs. This is it. another important factor, the TK with osteosynthesis. I think uh, very few I have I've gone through the literature the uh, way I did. I think this is the, you can, uh, I'll show you the tricks of operating uh, osteosynthesis with TK. Well, that is possible only with the CRNAs with the uh, navigations. This is a 54 years male, osteoarthritis, both knees. Uh, BMI is 38, it means obese patients. Right knee, 15 degree varus, 20 degree fifth patient deformities, left knee, 20 degree varus. It means a bilateral varus deformities with the 20 degree fifth patient deformities. And there is a fracture in the middle condyle on the left side. Confined to bed for more than four months, no history of trauma and fall. It means, see, this is the April 19. This is the right side. This is the defects. There you can find out this fracture line. This is the stress fracture on the left side. This is on the April 19. This is the July 19. This is a stress factor is increasing. And uh, this is the time when patient approached me, appeared me the nine, August 19. August 19, this is the stress fractures. We've done the CT scan. This is the whole medial condyle, intracondylar fractures with the osteoarthritic changes. Now the issue is that, uh, what to do? Now, now that there is a, uh, there is a, I think, difference of opinion. People say that I'll first fix the 
uh, middle condyle first, then I'll go ahead with this PK because this patient is already buried in for the six months. There is a stress fracture. And when there's a stress fracture, and if you again fix the bone and you just uh, let him lie down on the bed and you want that the, this fracture to be healed up, it will take another at least three to four months of time. It means the, in that case, the things will be more complicated because the patient is already having a shorter thing in the other knees also. So only issue is that you can reduce the morbidity only you can perform both the surgeries together. You can perform both the surgeries together if you can perform the TKA with fracture fixations and the TKA that will solve the purpose. So we plan the way like this. We plan the uh, everything is in a one go. It is a uh, difficult case and difficult because I am trained to do it. I plan, but I, 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 if you are not trained, then you are not supposed to. Uh, the huge uh, work, then you should better uh, divide the work. You know, one or two sittings, you can operate the right knee first, then you go for this left knee. Because uh, I've been operating for the, then I've been used to operate such things. Then that's why I opted the whole surgery in one go. So I start with this. See, the fracture is not united. You see there. This fracture is not united. This is the fracture on the left side. This fracture, this fracture is this fracture is not united. It is moving. It's absolutely non-union. We fix the fracture with the plate and screws, and we can get the anatomical fixations of the fracture part and you put a graft. Because we already done the right knee first, then you have a good amount of bone with us. You put a little bit of bone in that because. It has got anatomical fixation, so hardly we need any bone graft over there because if at all we need a lot of bone grafts we have. Now the challenge is the uh, distant femur cut, then rotations, and then the alignment. We use the navigations. I think there is the only way you can do it is the computer navigations because uh, plate is already there for the distant cut and the amount of cut and the alignment. I think best way you can do it is this computer navigation. We can give the perfect alignment of the whole knee replacement system with this, uh, with this uh, computer navigation. We have done the computer navigations after fixing the plate because this fracture was first fixed with this uh, plate. Another thing is that uh, this is the left side because uh, this is the LCP, but I use the right side LCP in the uh, left side because with the, the middle side, we use this of uh, bone in the medial side because there is a we don't have any plate either you have to go for this the uh, less profile less uh, you know this fracture was uh, intraarticular and the huge fracture is there so we have options we can use a filler sometimes many of my cases i'll show you in uh, another case where i use the fillers in both the sides but see is the is the medial condyle fractures and we i need a, a stout a, a heavy duty plate on the middle side of the LCP. Because what LCP we have, only the LCP we can put the lateral side. So why we have chosen, I have chosen the plate from the right side, right side LCP, we use the left side. And this is the LCP I used for the fixation of the bones. One bones is fixed, then I took the navigations and I take the distal femur cut, I operated the bone, I operated. This is the uh, post-op, immediate post-op X-rays. And see, I put I to the because I feel that this fracture was well fixed. I was planned to put a plate also over here on the left, left side, but it was fixed well on the middle side. This is buttressing the fracture sides. So that's why I put a two screws only. And it, it was suffice to get a good anatomical fixation of the fracture. And then I use this uh, in that case also, this special was intact. I'm telling you, because and this is the type of piece I use this here, the pivot knee. Because in the pivot knee, uh, you need to cut uh, because if at all the PCL is not intact and you have to sacrifice the PCL in that case, you need to take the uh, PCL, for, uh, the, in, remove the PCL or there is no box cut in the pivot knees. So in these cases, this is a pivot knees, I use the pivot knee because in the pivot knee, if at all PCL was not intact, I can change the exchange, the poly, and I can come across the sear knees, primary sear knees, the primary implant. Uh, primary uh, CR uh, uh, poly, but that's, this poly will be the ultra conduit. But fortunately, this is the left knee, the PCL was intact, PCL was healthy. After fixing the bones, everything was fine. I took the, uh, I helped take help the uh, navigations. I take all the cuts of the femur, 
then i came to this uh, tibia since patient was heavy and bones was not porotic bone i choose i opted the stem i put stem on the both the sides this is in the left side right side of the pretty straight forward because this was a varus knee i compensate the uh, defects on the middle defects of the bone and screws i made the uh, defects then i put a uh, standard uh, anatomical implant with a 9 mm flat poly this is a 30 post op day patient was absolutely comfortable see why why i opted this because if i opted this surgery is generally i can make the patient immediately uh, after uh, partial weight bearing after 3 4 days and after started immediate the post op exercises weight bearing after 3 to 4 days partial weight bearing on the left side full weight bearing on the right side and gradually i increased the weight on the left side and after 30 days he was allowed to walk without support this is a 3 months follow up there the it was the, all the fracture was absolutely intact and the, there was a uh, no reductions and the, it was uniting fractures and everything all implant was is intact and patient was doing very well absolutely painless and the plate was also in situ this is a 90 days follow up patient was comfortable with a good range of movements as a more than 110 degree flexions full extension there is no no extension lag and patient was allowed to do the stairs climbing also and he was doing the stairs stairs climbing just that this is a 9 months follow up i asked the patient to send the x rays and you see the complete union of the fracture and the, the implant in situ and everything is gone well and patient is absolutely comfortable so simultaneous primary tk with this to see is a very viable options because i think it reduces the morbidity it gives the more confidence for the to the patients for the tk because total knee orthoplasty i think i think there is one of the best surgeries right now available we can give to the patients when the patient is bed, bed, lying on the bed for the last 6 month and after surgery is if patient is allowed to walk on the next day then it gives the confidence to the patient and it gives a very good uh, uh, I, i i think is a very good uh, feedback for the this uh, 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 procedures because the knee replacement needs a uh, uh, because this is the procedure huge number of patients are waiting in india for mostly many of them are scared they feel that the this outcome of the surgery is not good so this gives the positive feedback for this uh, orthoplasty procedures and i think we should opt for this procedures and this is possible everything is possible but you have to go because once i i try to find it out in the literatures there was no not much mention of this uh, primary osteosynthesis with the tk because in many of the cases they use the uh, tibia or femur stem because this is possible only you were using the navigation because while you fix the plate then you cannot put a uh, rod inside the femur to take the orientations to take the distal femur car in that case you have to use the navigation in any form either in the uh, standard navigation so you can the, right now so many type of navigation is available but you can some manual i think i'm not very much uh, master in that doing this uh, uh, the primary or without machines navigation but some people try that but i think you can handheld navigation or some Uh, i think some mobile never navigation what should ever type of navigation you need you need to for this only the femur card this is femur card that is the most important card and you have to choose for the implant where you can come across with the sear implant because when you put a put in the distal femur screws you cannot get into this uh, standard ps implant so you have to have opt for a implant where if you pcl is not intact if you are not very much comfortable with the pcl in that case you can get away or get uh, this uh, some craft poly or some different type of poly which can help you to get rid of this issues so operating such fracture with the tk you have to have a navigation in any form and you have to have a implants which either you can put a standard pack poly or a ultra congruent poly or uc poly whatever poly is important because you cannot take the uh, box cut because if it is the box cut there is screws are there you cannot perform in the both the surgeries together and that thing that you have to reduce the fracture in anatomical because if you are not able to reduce the fracture in anatomical corrections then there may be difficulties in uh, weight shifting then maybe the problem in the uh, bone union also so it is better to get the anatomical reductions and when you open the knees everything is in front of you it is not very difficult to get anatomical reductions and you can easily get into this only issue is that uh, choosing the uh, 
uh, implant is difficult but in such cases i think the philos proximal humerus plate is sometimes i use i think that is a better way of doing it in the medial side while it is a low profile plate and you cannot use the bigger one in the medial side basically you need a low profile plate only but since this is a, a huge patient 38 you know i was 38 the over over patients and with a huge fracture extending to the uh, cortex uh, cortex so i feel that i use a sturdy a good amount of uh, plate lcp that's why i opted for this lcp and we fixed it with this uh, proper screws uh and primary implant should be considered that is the beauty of this tk i think always you should compromise with the primary surgery with so the, uh, the least constrained implant because when you use the least constrained implant they do not know patient might need another surgery in near future for any reasons in that case you have a left so always i feel that you always start with the basic minimum implant starts with this uh, ultra uh, you can uh, unicorn dela then you can come because they cr knees then you can go for the ps or something like that but doing the now uh, where the limited indication is they are doing the unicondylar knees but this is also beautiful knees but i think if you if you can come across you can solve the problem with the unicondylar always you should start with the unicondylar first then you can go the cr knees then you go the ps something like that you should not jump into the constraint in one go if it is could be solved with the other type of knees and you can take the opinion from your seniors your friends you can take the i think it is always better to take the opinion we should have we should give the best treatment Uh, available treatment for the patients and you cannot come to the conclusion before consulting your friends that this is not possible everything is possible you can take the opinion to find out to whom to talk where to take the opinions now this is a, another issue so tk with implant in situ uh, this is under 66 years may delayed union with implant in situ osteoarthritis with 30 degree varus deformities this patient was operated for the uh, distal condylar fractures femur It operated nine months back in some of the hospitals, and patient uh, this bone is a take the delayed one is inviting fracture and is a painful. Uh, patient was was varus deformity, painful, 66 years, he hardly works, and he want to get rid of this problem. Now issue is that he has been visited couple of uh, doctors. All says you have to wait till the fracture unites, and he is fed up. Nobody give you the assurance when this fracture will unite. So. i decided i will operate this case uh under navigations and i will be i will now own remove the implant i will keep, keep remain the implant there and i'll go for this total knee orthoplasty but when there is a uh, implant there then you have to first exclude whether patient is having any infections or not because you, because when there is an implant there is a chance there is a maybe some in, uh, underlying infection so you have to examine the uh, knees locally and you have to take all the uh, blood in infections like cbc esr crp normally non tk we don't advise esr crp but in such cases always you should think for this esr crp because you have to exclude infections because patient is already implant is there moreover over and above you want to go for the total knee orthoplasty so first you have to exclude infections if there is a not infection is there then you can plan for such surgeries and here is also the uh, Yeah, navigation is must because you cannot plan such surgeries without navigations and the minimum removal of the implant if it is come on the way then only remove otherwise not no way is like this we started with this you must prepare first this minimum bone part because uh, it is not difficult one because only issue is that if you have a navigation and everything is very easy uh, if it is not there because bone is structure uh, is not even you are supposed to expose the fracture also you can because it is a uniting fracture only issue is that it is a mad united fracture and uh, you can say this is the uh, you can correct the, this uh, deformity with intra articular deformity and intra articular with the bone cuts so everything is possible with the one go with one solution with this tka because even if the bone unites because this fracture was a uniting with the before in the malunion so uh, you can correct the deformities you can get into the problem of the delayed union you can give the one shot solution you can make the patient working in the next day without issue and of course it should be the minimum bone cut same things i did i operated with this uh, uh, minimum uh, bone cut then we the use the navigations we i just removed only one screws which was coming into the on the way and we put the primary cr implant here also i use the pivot piece in such cases i pivot is give the very good result because if you are not sure of this special because patient has operated 
previously was the, uh, the maybe the pcl is damaged and maybe some because i have seen also if the patient is operated a couple of times maybe also but pcl is always intact pcl is is very stout i think most uh, strongest ligament available in our human being is the pcl i you have to should respect the pcl it is even in the very bad knees also even operated knees also pcl is always there and how we can able to balance ligament perfectly uh, see this is a i made the patient walking in a same day with a brace and he was giving the good this day in top only the second day this patient also i operated in the covid time because patient was very frustrated he was on the bed so this patient i operated i think uh, 27 july only at the month 27 july because this patient was also frustrated all i operated during the covid period the frustrated patients because not able to walk on bed lying he is having some heart problem also he was very frustrated he do not know when the things should be going right he says yes i i operate me i am I'm, i'm not doing well and i think uh, best to wipe and solve my problems so i did see the patient start walking in the in the hospital and he start walking without support and we can good alignment is there and the good cortis of strain and patient is doing very well the only proper implant choice and meticulous planning can reduce the morbidity see this is the only way you can reduce the morbidity of the patient an excellent outcome patient is very happy increase confidence of the procedure that is very very important i think all the joint replacement surgeons i do request them you do a very good job huge number of patients are waiting in the, in the india who needs such surgeries but only issue is that uh, we have to perform them you have to give them the very good result and if the result is good then it gives a very good uh, confidence to the procedure they say that this procedure is good you should go ahead with the surgery if the things is not doing well then they say no it's a very bad procedure should not offer this total knee replacement and here is also no constraint implant used in any no constraint component used no poly nothing it is absolutely simple primary knees this is another issues another patients was the this the plate is there uh, i can really come across this the tk without removing the plate is a Sear knees with a non-even flat poly. Of course, such operating such cases, you need a uh, uh, job, you know, sear navigation also. This patient was operated multiple times. Blood in 110 kg weight patients. This patient was operated for the femur. This is not uniting fractures, and uh, this is also not uniting. Patient was operated somewhere else. He came with the bed, and he, he wants to. She wants to uh, walk. So what I opted that I planned for surgery is I did the TK with the implant in situ, and patient is did very well. the periprosthetic fractures this should i tell this is a uh, 91 years old uh, this patient is around 80 years old this patient is 80 years old this is a periprosthetic fractures but patient was operated with the sear knees so it is better i can put a uh, dual plates i think the best way of you can do with that dual plate that is a very good fixation and if the sear knees is there you can if the chance is there you can put a good amount of uh, uh, screws you can that is a better fixation of the plate and see it is a is a uniting well this is a three months follow up this this one is united and allowed the patient for the walking the revision knee i'm telling you even the revision also sear knee revision is very easy because the good amount of bone even using the revision implant you can use this 9 mm poly okay the 10 11 mm poly any amount of poly you don't need any a sleeve you don't need any cone because i have seen the if you are using the converting the ps implant ps knees into this uh, revision is a very difficult because we if you remove the small knees if you remove the implant the hardly few amount of condyles left and there is a doubt whether the uh, lcl or mcl is intact or not in such, such cases you might have to go for this some constraint implant or fully constraint implant but in the sear knee the whole amount of bone is left so at least you are get the good amount of this uh, mcl and lcl and there is a hardly any a uh, chance of disruption of this implant and you can get into this primary semi constraint implant it means that the patient result will be very good thank you very much this is my honest uh, i have shown you a couple of cases where we can show you the i think all cases we can do with the sear knees and i think is a uh, we should try with the sear because you know when i started with the sear knees people say is no there is a the limitations only uh, what uh, what is the purpose why i am here to share my cases Uh, today i came to know i realized that all cases you can do with a sear implant but only issue is that you have to think the you have to plan the surgery you have to plan the implant and you have to patience with you 
because saving the PCL is an art. It is not a 20 minutes, 30 minutes surgery. If you're a busy surgeon, if you feel that I want to finish my surgery in 30 minutes, in that case, it will be very difficult to save the PCL. But saving the PCL in hours is a, a, a time-taking surgery. But definitely, if we can save the PCL, result is amazing. Result is very good. It is for the patients. Balance is good. Patient recovery is good. And thank you very much. I hope that if you have any queries, any I think the delegates, any of our was every time operating, if you can come and, and show how you're operating, you can join me and I can show you where you operate. Thank you very much. Hello. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sujoy. That was an excellent. Uh, uh, I think basically I have not seen so many number of cases of CR knees together in one presentation. All yeah. variety you have, I think you have covered it from start from the basics to the most complex to yeah. at, the, at the end. So yeah. I have few queries for you. So you are, uh, have you completely given up the uh, PS knee? Yeah. Yes. Okay. And uh, with the CR knee, see, it's like that. Ke the, I have seen, I was going to ask you that the Indians usually come late with so much, but you showed such great deformities using the CR knee that I cannot ask that question anymore. You are already managing it very well. So you don't release the PCL at all. How do you actually save the PCL in such complex, unstable cases? No, no, no. I'm saying, oh, see, I'll start with the thing. only issue is that CR knee first we balance with the flexion, then you come with the extensions. Mm -hmm. We don't release any tissues we first, humor first. We cut all the, then you see, if you need accordingly, you release. We never release. Even I'm telling you, even the gross viral deformity, if you feel that your MCL is a little bit off, relax. In that case also, if PCL is intact, if PCL is intact, you can come across with this ear implant. But if you are doing a PS knee, and if you feel that your MCL is not intact, definitely you have to go for the semi implant. PCL, I think that is the best structures in the knees. We can balance your knees. We can rely. If your, I think some issue is with the ligaments, with the medial or lateral collateral ligaments. But I think both the pillars are intact. Even the little bit of PCL is, then you can come across the ultra-conveyant poly or UC poly. But I am not using too much of ultra conveyant poly. I feel that that is a type of semi constraint. I don't want to use any type of constraint implant inside my knees. Absolutely primary. I, I found up being on a platform. So it's wonderful to see uh, such a wide array of cases. So I wanted to ask you a question about that stiff knee young female which you showed. What was the cause of her stiffness? Why was she so stiff? To begin I, with? Many of these Indian females, I think there's a trauma. I think she had a history of trauma and she was put on a plaster, long back. The once in the plaster, she was not rehabilitated properly and she made a habit. She started walking with the, only the stiff knee because she felt that that reduced the pain. With okay. a post-trauma. Post-traumatic. Yeah, so it's mostly post-traumatic because in Indians, we usually don't see stiff knees so commonly, at least in the older population. Yeah, I, it's not that common. It's absolutely stiff knee. This was absolutely yes. stiff. Yeah, she, she was absolutely stiff with, with, her, with no movement at all. Oh. Even under anesthesia, there was hardly jog of movement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. So that yes. was one of the most tough cases, I think, for uh, you. How much quadriceps to release. That That is where you required releases. No, I don't need to release. Only issue is that we have to, first things you have to care for this, release the patella from the femur. Then you have to release the quadriceps tendon from the various sub to release of the quadriceps tendon. And you just subluxate the patella and you relieve the, release the quadriceps, a, a, a osteophytes. If you release the osteophytes from the femur, then yeah, and you just prepare the uh, patella, you will get a space, you can lateralize the uh, tibia. A patella, and once the tumor is exposed, when cut the fall cuts the tumor, that is very easy. But if you want to do with the tibia first, in such cases, it is really difficult. You study the tumor first, then things are very easy. I feel that it is very easy because I'm a serious surgeon. I think I, because I always start with the tumor first, because I think once I cut the I, I accept the, the tibia is the most important cut in the tibia and the PK. Once you cut the tibia, nothing left. But the, I, I, I can do something wrong with the tumor. God will mercy, have mercy for doing something wrong with the femur. But he will not save me if I'm doing something wrong with the tibia. Tibia, I think, is most important. Tibia cards, I think, most important card. After all cards, you take the tibia because of all release, you can find out how much amount of cards you can do. In the varus knee also, I cut very less because if you remove the osteophytes, after cutting the femur, there is a chance you can remove the osteophytes. Then you know how much you have to cut. But sometimes you do not cut also. 
because so much are relaxed. You do not take out. You just go for this the condo a little bit of just so cheap. I show you the case. Valgas Varasni, Varas Valgasni. I even didn't cut anything on the. I just make multiple holes on the lateral condos because the atrophic condos. Even the TB also, I put a stem. That's all. I hardly cut anything because if you cut too much, then you cannot accommodate with this yarn. Then you have to go for this other type of things. And it is so a 20 minute surgery. It is the exact patience. So now I come to approaches. So what is the what is the when do you decide that you should do medial parapetalar approach and when do you decide that you should go laterally? See, I'm all valgus knee. I I feel that I always go for the lateral approach. That is a very good approach. Only issue is that we are used to of doing the varus. We don't want to change it. Basically, it is a mental block. We feel that I can do it. Of course, we can do it. Any type of valgus knee. I I I presented many of my cases in the conference. I told that. Many of the senior surgeons say, "No, no, I am very much comfortable with doing the valgus knee in the middle parapetal." I say, "Everybody can do it, but thing is that in that case you have to wear, you have to struggle. If you lateral parapetal approach defect is just in front of you, it is very easy to get into the defects when you go the heavy approach, lateral approach." And uh, what about uh, this uh, stem use? I saw a lot of cases in the beginning of the present age. Later on, of course, you have to use the stem because those are complex. <coughs> Sorry, where you are using tibial stems. So, how yeah. do you decide in this case I should use a tibia stem and in this case I should not use a tibia stem? See, I am telling you, when the <laughs> osteoporotic patients and mm. the overweight patients, I always prefer to put a stem. I use the short stem, 75, fully cemented, 75 mm stem. When the patient is porotic and is morbidly obese patients. Okay, got it. And all of your patients uh, walk on day one. Yeah, I don't use tunica. I never use mm -hmm. tunica. I don't ex uh, use the uh, patella also. I just subluxate the patella. Many of the times I use the your uh, subvastus approach also. And many of the times I use the your trivector approach. And I hardly I touch the quadriceps tendon. down. And I make the patient stand if not walk in the day one. And the second day, third day, I make the patient walk. And uh, uh, do you? Uh, what I was going to ask, sorry, I forgot. Do you, uh, when you are uh, using those uh, stems, Mala, do you do the CR knees without the stems also? A routine, yeah, non-complex yeah, 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 yeah. Of course. Only the specific indication of the deformity is there, but I think the defect is there. The tibia defect. I have to compromise the defect with the bone graft or bone graft and screws. In that case, definitely, if the defect is contained defect, then I better to uh, put a stem over them. Otherwise, that can sack. So, in the CR uh, knee, the importance the, the, in the CR knee, the importance of this is that you can put a stem even in a primary implant. Yes, versus yes. The PA, yeah. Versus the PS knee, where most of the companies don't offer a stem in a primary implant. No, no, you can use the primary implant also. Even in the PS also, you can use it. No problem. Mm -hmm. I think the implant CR CR implant, the the tibia is same. In the whether you're using the uh, CR implant or uh, you the only difference is the femur and poly. Tibia tray is same in both the cases. Okay. Whether you're using the uh, PS or CR, tibia is same. Only difference is the femur and poly. Mm -hmm. I think the most important part is the femoral condyles. I think forget about the PCL because there is a fight in the PS surgeon, CR surgeons, all the proprioceptions, all the, all these uh, rollback and these and that. But only issue is the revision. While you're doing the revising the patient with the PS knees, size B, small size, hardly anything left. Vision is a big issue. Yes, you're right. So the main advantage I felt is that basically when you're doing is that the you don't have to revise. So the revision becomes much easier with the CR knees. Absolutely. The long you, do, you don't use sleep, you don't use cone. It means you're mm -hmm. reducing the cost of the revision surgeries. Yes. Because mm -hmm. when you're doing the surgeries, even whatsoever, even in the best centers in the world also. There is a chance of revision, chance of infection, or whatsoever right. is there. While you're doing the primary implant, primary knee, always you have to keep in mind either you or any of your friends, any of your colleague will be doing the revision of these patients. If you feel like that, like that, then you will be the minimum implant. And of course, you will not go for this any type of constraint implant. You will keep everything. 9 mm poly means you are using the least amount of bone cut. So everything left for the future use. What about the longevity of CR versus PS? Is there any research or is there your personal think, experience? Uh, How does it? The research is the CR and is say there is a fight. Better not to ask such questions because every conference there is a fight of the PS and CR surgeons. I think uh, right now CR is better even in the India also younger surgeons. I think the CR and people are opting because previously there was only a flat poly 
right now we have a ultra convenient poly or double height poly something like that where if you have a doubt of the pcl then you can do it see when i started doing cr i was i was told that there is certain indication only you can the cr but in certain the deformity of primary complex you cannot go for this cr you have to opt for the ps but in that case rheumatoid patients i'll show you i am blindly i am using all rheumatoid patient the cr knees but previously 6 years back i was scared to put a cr knee because scared because i thought that if there's something wrong then i may be sued for putting a cr knee in the rheumatoid patients but right now i am very confident that even in the rheumatoid patients also ps if you properly uh, decompress the pcl is in all such cases pcl is always intact pcl is always healthy and you can say salvage the pcl you can in the rheumatoid patient also you can do with the uh, cr knee okay and that's all from my side uh, i thank you very much dr sujoy bhattacharji to show us a wide variety of cases and for me who has never done a cr knee basically i may attempt a cr knee in my next surgery so Perfect. it is uh, yeah so it's a very uh, wonderful implant according to what you have shown and you can use it on all complex type of cases yes so that is the magic which you have shown i think you are a very skilled surgeon thank the you. way you have handled all these complex cases is a very big thing and let's hope that we have you very soon again uh, in a panel discussion where we'll have a cr versus ps i'll be very happy thank you very much i i thank you very much, okay. thank you very much and bye bye we bye. thank uh, we thank dr suja bhatta ji charji and we thank uh, biored medicines the makers of genius crn for bringing us this webinar thank, thank you, you and you. bye bye i'm telling you bioed is also having a genius crn is i've used one yes. case uh, there is excellent needs 